Hello all, and welcome back to Refactoring Python Code. We're in a new section today about simplifying long and complex functions into smaller methods. As I said last video, this is one of the most important strategies we employ when we refactor code to combat technical debt. In this section, we're going to take a look at four different topics. Number one, refactoring through splitting up functions. Number two, refactoring through merging functions. Number three, replacing complex expressions with inner function calls. Number four, refactoring through local variable creation. Let's look at the first one. In this video, we're going to focus on refactoring through splitting up functions. We're going to do this in five steps. So all of these videos in this section will have these five steps, more or less. Number one, I'm going to give you a detailed walkthrough of what is a symptom and when is too long. Number two, why is a fix needed? Number three, why does doing a particular action in this video help? In this case, in our video, we're thinking about splitting up long functions. Why does splitting up functions help? Number four, how we can refactor this or solve this problem by hand. And number five, how we can do with VS Code so we don't need to do it by hand all the time. Let's look at a symptom. Usually, when you are coding something or evolving your code over time, you would add more and more logic and more and more features into the code. And usually, multiple people work on the same thing, so you would have functions which kind of creep in scope or creep in functionality. And then what happens is, you would get a big function that does multiple things that are that is very hard to test, very hard to understand, and very hard to document, right? One example is this import leads function. So we first open the file, we read the lines, we then process the lead, and we then enrich the lead, and then we then return the process leads. This is actually quite hard to describe, right? If we try to create like a doc string for this, we're like, okay, so we import, there's like four or five steps, import the file, process leads, enrich leads, return processed. So lots of things happening and not very ideal, okay? Let me copy this over to a new file and then I'll show you how we can fix this and why is the fix so I've created a new file, CRM refactor.py. Does what it says on the tin. So why does splitting up a function help? Splitting up the function gives you multiple advantages. Number one, it's easier to test because one function only does one thing. Number two, it's easier to document because you can you only need to describe one thing in detail. Number three, it's easy for you and your colleagues to understand this because there's only one thing to understand, right? If you look at this long function, you'd be like, okay, so what does it do? It imports the file, blah, blah, blah. You then look at the code and it was like, okay, it does process the thing. Where's the file opening done? And it's all. So let's try refactoring this, right? The first thing I, I personally do is I'll try to split up the function into logical steps. So here we are processing the lead. So we probably can replace this by a new feature called process leads in file lead. And we can nicely document it and say process leads read from a file leads is a list of leads. There. And we will just refactor this. So we take this in here. So the way we do this is just copy it. Really easy. That. We fix some indentation. And we also need to copy this over. And then we can return process leads like that. And then we can replace this with processed leads equals to process leads in file 
completes. So now we have one step completely encapsulated here and we know exactly what this step does. Let's continue on. So the other for loop that we want to eliminate is we want to take away this one. So this is roughly enriching the leads or maybe formatting the information that comes in. So we just say So I think now the question that I would have as a programmer when I'm refactoring this is, should I create an enriched lead function that only does this, so it takes the p lead and enriches it, or should I take the whole for loop and use that? So it's, it's really up to you. I think in this case, it's better to take the whole for loop and put it here. So. I usually use results as just a clean way to do this. So actually, he wants to do that. Result. So here, if you read this, then all it is, it's okay. I read this, and I know that we're returning a list. And so we'll paste the code that we've copied from before. Uh, and then we need process leads in the input because imagine you know we're putting this into this function here and then we need to this and then we need to result dot append p lead we need to return the results and then because we have process leads here we then say enriched leads equal to enriched lead process and notice that because we have made the decision to enrich leads with including the for loop so we're actually enriching leads and then change this and there and so we actually need to return a different thing and we no longer need to use the process lead function So there it is. So suddenly import leads is a lot cleaner and you know exactly what it's doing, right? Whereas enrich leads also has one purpose and so does process leads. We're going to further improve this by saying we only want one function to, to read the file. So we actually create def read leads from file, file name. We want one function to handle the reading of the list so we can so we can isolate the IO part and the processing part. Actually we don't even need results. To do return have read lines. So we read the whole file in one go, return it, and we can then do this. So this handles the error reporting. So now import leads is simply raw leads, leads from file, leads file, and then refactor that up. You can see that moving things around and Taking things in and out of functions is the core of refactoring. And so suddenly our import leads function is very clean. We have four lines and we know exactly what's happening. We take the raw leads from the file, process the raw leads, enrich the leads, and return the enriched leads. And then if we look at each of the functions, they're also very clear. Reading leads from file exactly does what it says on the function name and so does enrich leads and so does process leads in file. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to do this with VS Code. So if we, how do I do this? I think the best way is to show you here. So if we copy this long function back in here, lead 
notes, so this is really bad. Don't copy me on the function naming. But I want to show you what VS Code can do, right? So imagine, remember when we were splitting this up, we were saying, okay, we want this into its own function, so we copied it over, Control C, Control V. We can also use a function in VS Code called extract method. And then what happens is you then, it then copies it out. And what you need to do is type in the new method name. So let's call it process leads VS Code. So what happened is you should have number one, it has replaced the functions and parsed all its inputs and outputs and created a new function called process leads VS code and takes the leads and the process leads. So it knows that this is the input and this is the output. And let's look at how this is defined. And this has successfully just encapsulated all the code from us. And also as a side effect, because it also detects that we have actually previously extracted this function before, it has also replaced this, right? So it's actually very, very smart. It finds all the same code that you have within the Python file and extracts it all into a function. So this is how you do splitting up functions in VS Code with a click of a button. So a lot more robust as you just click a function and it's done instead of using copy and paste. That's all there is to it. So we've just learned that Long functions are bad because it's hard to maintain, hard to test, hard to describe, and hard to ex explain and understand. We talked about splitting up the function so that each function does one thing, makes it easier to test, blah, 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 blah. We refactored by hand, lots of copy and pasting and moving things around. We also refactored by VS Code, which is actually really smart, although it takes a bit of getting used to because it's automatically touching your code.